Honest to Vlog. Good morning, light bulbs. As Erica mentioned, I can sometimes come off as arrogant in my videos. And frankly, I do place myself at the top of the list of people I want to please with my videos. So if you consider it arrogant that I disregard other people's opinions in favor of mine, then yes, I am arrogant, and frankly, I'm okay with that. That said, Erica was also one of a handful of people who at VidCon told me that they were surprised to become my friend because based off of my YouTube character, they thought I was a jerk. In most cases, that surprise was actually mutual as people who I thought were boring in their videos turned out to be perfectly interesting in actual conversation. By judging their videos, I dismissed people as being one-dimensional fluff with no real edge to their personality, only to find that in person they actually had opinions and character and whatnot. I think an important thing to both realize and keep in mind while watching YouTube is that there are a large variety of reasons to be making YouTube videos and none of them are really more correct than any other. And while that's a very obvious statement and a correct reaction to it would be, well, duh, I think we often forget that and I know I personally often do. It happens all the time where I watch a video and think it's absolute crap and then only later do I think, well, maybe the person wasn't actually trying to be entertaining, so why does it really matter? Maybe the person doesn't care if it's good art or not, and maybe they are just talking to a camera because they want to talk into a camera, and if they enjoy uploading eight-minute, unedited, poorly lit videos of themselves talking about their day, then that's fantastic and good for them for doing what they want to do. Expecting everyone on YouTube to have the same aims and goals with their videos is no more ridiculous than expecting everyone in the world to have the same goals and beliefs in life. And yet I think a lot of people don't keep this in mind and it leads to a lot of confusion. I've heard many conversations of people saying they don't like certain YouTubers because they are fake and that in real life they aren't nearly as cool as they are on YouTube and shame on them for being phony and playing a character. What's happening there is that the creator of the content is considering entertainment while the viewer is looking at it as if it was purely social. From the creator's perspective, asking them to be the same character they are in their videos is really no more absurd than asking an actor to play his character from the movie all the time, or asking a singer to be singing his words all the time. It's a performance. They're putting themselves in front of a camera and putting on a show. It's inherently contrived. Whereas on the other side of this divide, you have people who aren't trying at all to be creative with their videos. They just want to present a real version of themselves for the purpose of communication. In my mind, it's this dichotomy of art versus communication that makes up the biggest division on YouTube. The tricky thing is that there's really almost no one I know of that's purely on one side or the other. Most everyone resides somewhere in the middle, but it's very difficult to tell exactly where on the scale they are. My personal solution to this problem is to decide that it doesn't matter. I think we often view videos as a means to the end of getting to know a person, and it's with this mindset that not knowing where a person falls on the art versus communication scale that it becomes a problem. I choose to bypass this by just enjoying videos as an end in themselves. How a person acts in real life is not going to make me enjoy their content any more or less. I may see a video and think that, wow, I'd really like to know the mind that that came out of, but I think it is important to separate what a person produces from that person themselves.